Now, when I proclaim martial law, I didn't proclaim martial law alone. Uh, it is made to appear as if uh, I, I just uh, signed the decree and said, I impose martial law on each and every one of you. No. I ask the legislature to please pass a law proclaiming martial law because there was anarchy in the country. Now, uh, let me uh, say this. The opposition was strong. And uh, they were members of the Security Council, and somehow they adopted the resolution which uh, required that there be a unanimous vote for the armed forces to be able to move. And therefore, the armed forces was mobilized. At the same time, I asked uh, um, the um, opposition party to come and join me in a coalition government. I offered one half of the cabinet. And of course, they laughed at me and said, why should we join you? We're going to take over the government. By the time you are through with the exercise, you're dead, politically and otherwise. So, and they uh, refused to join uh, me. I asked the advice of the uh, judiciary. I asked the Supreme Court justices, the no, Court of Appeals justices, and the members of the private sector. And all of them told me there's only one man who can proclaim martial law, and that is the president. And you are it. You are the only one who can proclaim martial law. This is why I must carry this particular mark in our history. I could, have, I could not have transferred it to the legislature. Why? Because the legislature did not have the power. What does the Constitution provide? The uh, president shall be the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Philippines, and he may order the armed forces out to quell any disorder, riot, rebellion, invasion, insurrection, and in case of invasion, insurrection, rebellion, or imminent danger thereof, when the public safety requires it, he may suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus or proclaim martial law throughout the Philippines or any part thereof. What does that provision provide? It provides that only the president can proclaim martial law. I repeat, that is why I had to assume uh, responsibility. And I am not one for shirking duty. The people said there was necessity for proclaiming martial law. And the people said, you are the only re official who can proclaim martial law. So I hate. I proclaimed martial law. And I sincerely believed that it was necessary to proclaim martial law to install order and stability because there was complete anarchy throughout the country at the time. Now, therefore, uh, at that particular period, uh, what was the status of our government? Our government was immobilized, impotent. The armed forces could not move out. The industry was uh, not at all in any way uh, um, moving. Uh, there was no income coming into government. Everybody was running away. They burned the U.S. Embassy, partly burned the U.S. Embassy, tried to burn it anyway. They tried to kidnap the American ambassador. American ambassador was by road, ambassador by road. And uh, they tried to kidnap uh, our foreign minister, Foreign Minister Romulo, whom you just uh, um, saw today. And I told him, you better disappear because I will not ransom you. <laughs> but whatever it is, they burned the Manila International Airport, they bombed the Supreme Court, they bombed the Constitutional Convention, they bombed the City Hall, they burned uh, part of uh, Malacanian Palace, they attempted to uh, kidnap my children, they attempted to kill the president eight times. There was, of course, an attempted assassination against the First Lady. You all know about that.